Hey there, you probably heard about the latest release uh, of Angular version 8. You're now wondering how to update? Let's see how that works. So here I have a simple application, which is some kind of issue manager. So if you take a look at it, it has some issues, you can open them, you can edit them, you can go back. So actually quite a simple application. Now this is written in Angular version 7. As you can see here, it is written with one of the latest versions of Angular v7. And what we would like to do now is to actually upgrade to version 8. So the first step is to open up that update.angular.io site, because here we can get instructions of what commands we have to execute in order to upgrade. And so what I do here is I choose here that I'm having a version 7.2. I want to go to version 8. Now here I can choose the app complexity, medium, advanced, and so on. And based on what you choose here, you will get more detailed instructions. Now in our case, let's say we have a basic app. I also choose here, I use Angular Material. The package manager is npm. And so you can click here, show me how to update. And so below here, you will get the instructions. Now here there are some preparation steps. So before actually upgrading Angular, you have to do some preparation steps. Maybe it's not necessary, but in case you're actually having some old HTTP module and HTTP service, these are now deprecated and should definitely switch to the HTTP client module. Also, you should remove deprecated RxJS 6 features. And for doing so, you can use that lint rule. You can just basically execute this one and it will automatically upgrade your code and fix any issues which are in there. Now, once that is done, let's actually go to the upgrade process. So you can see here, we use that ng update process command. And so let's copy this. Let's go over to our app. Let's stop it. Clear again. And now we're paste in that command. Now we want also to add here Angular Material because we use, are using Angular Material in our code base. So therefore we also want to upgrade that and run automated migration scripts, which Angular Material ships by itself. And so with that, we are ready. Let's start. All right, so seems like everything went fine. Please do check the console log output here and verify whether there are any issues you need to fix manually. As you can see, the Angular CDK has been updated automatically. There are also some information link here printed out in the console, for instance, how you can basically specify the timing of the queries. What is meant here is basically the view child and view children, as well as the content children can now be timed more specifically. So we can specify whether we want to resolve them statically or dynamically at runtime. This has been an issue with Angular 7. Uh, further down, you see the files that have been updated and some further information suggests here that the Angular material update completed. But first of all, let's check here the git log. So we can see that in the package JSON, we got the update. So we see it switched from 7 to 0 to 8. Now, since I'm recording this video at a time where the final release is not yet out, you see here still the RC4. When you do the update, you actually should just get version 8 or something, not an RC version. Furthermore, what's interesting is here the TS config has been changed. Uh, it switched from ES2015 to ES Next and here to ES2015. This has to do with the differential loading, which is now coming with Angular 8, where they basically generate polyfills uh, based on your browser capabilities. And this saves, again, a lot of download size for our bundles. Let's check out some other changes. What also happened here in the app routing is you can see how the load children now change from a string to actually a proper import statement. So in Angular version 8, we do not have to rely anymore on these magic strings, which the CLI resolves behind the scenes, but rather we can actually use those import statements. And so these are equivalent and we should change them. And you can see here the upgrade process changed them for us automatically. Finally, in the shared module, you see changes as well. So before here, I had an import of various material modules from Angular Material. Now, since I have specified in the update process that I also want to update Angular Material, now Angular Material comes with its own update script, which is executed as well. So it transformed here basically the import statements in order to have deep imports from button card and so on for each module separately. And this is again for optimization purposes in order to cut out code, which we actually don't use. Great, so let's see where the app actually still works. Let's close this here, clean up here our 
console and do an npm start. It should again compile. Now let's switch over to our browser. Let's open up again. Let's refresh. And you can see it still works without any issues. Now you might actually wonder whether we execute this app already with the new Ivy compiler, the Ivy uh, rendering engine, which comes with Angular version eight. Now the story is that it isn't enabled by default. So it's still an opt-in. So the team has basically tested it, determined it, Google, and is now verifying it outside for the community projects. And it will be then enabled in version nine by default. But you definitely can opt in. So let's stop here the compiler. You go basically to your app JSON file. So if I open up our application here and you can see inside here at tsconfigapp.json. And so in order to opt in here, what we have to do is here below the compiler option somewhere here inside our TS app config, we specify Angular compiler options and we give it a key enable IV to true. You can actually get these instructions if you go to angular.io slash guides slash ivy. Now, since the official version is not out yet, you have to add that next bit front, but once version eight is out, you can drop that. And here again, basically instructions for how to opt in into the Angular Ivy compiler. So now let's actually compile the project using Ivy. Again, I just do an NPM start and behind the scenes, the Angular CLI will read these, this flag we have specified here and use the new Angular Ivy compiler rather than the one which is built in. All right, and so once the compilation finishes again, let's move over to our browser, let's refresh the application, and you can see it still works. So now our app is running on the new Angular Ivy compiler. So as you can see, the upgrade process is fairly simple and straightforward because the Angular CLI tries to automate it as far as possible. Now, I highly recommend that you go through those instructions. Also, for instance, verify potential breaking changes due to the TypeScript upgrade, which happens in version in Angular version 8 as well. Also go through those remaining steps. There might be some things you have to adjust. And finally, also try out those medium and advanced complexity instructions because you might have to do some further steps which are also happening inside your application. Other than that, this app of course doesn't use a lot of third-party external uh, libraries. Therefore, you might have some further issues when upgrading those external libraries because they might not yet be ready for Angular version 8. In case you have any issues, feel free to reach out to me and I will try to help you out with it or forward the feedback to the team.